Hello, my most amazing artists. Today we're going to be making our very own Aurora Borealis, those northern lights. To start out, you're gonna get two pieces of paper. One is a scrap piece of white paper that's a little bit thicker. It might be a different color if it's reused or recycled. And the most important piece of paper you're gonna to get today is your black piece of paper. Write your name and class code on both in pencil. It's very important that you write it in pencil so that we can see it because when I turn it in the light, I'll be able to see your name. Your name needs to be on the back of both of those papers, preferably at the bottom. Then I'm gonna turn over my black piece of paper, making sure that my name is on the back before I start, and I'm gonna get a toothbrush. With this toothbrush, I'm going to be using white paint to make stars in my sky of my Aurora Borealis. So I'm dipping it in a little bit of white paint. You'll have a very small amount of white paint on your table for you to use. The reason is because we are going to be splatter painting or flicking the paint from the toothbrush bristles to your paper. No, we are not flinging paint everywhere and we are not painting with our hands. If anybody does that, they will lose their painting privileges for the year. So please make sure that you're using this tool properly. Now sometimes it is a little tricky. I recommend putting your pointer finger on the top of the toothbrush and moving the bristles with your thumb. Make sure that you're moving them down, not towards your body, or you're gonna end up with stars all over you. And please make sure that your paper is staying on top of either a messy mat or just that you're not being too crazy with flinging those stars because it's going to be hard to wash off the tables and your clothes after. Then I'm gonna take a wipe from my bin and wipe my hands really, really well. Now I just washed the bin, so please make sure not to get stars all over the place and wipe your hands pretty well when you're done. You shouldn't have a huge mess if you just did a few stars in the sky. Now you're about to see that I did too much. Maybe I flung that paint a little too much and so I'm gonna make those into comments because I only get one piece of paper. I am not going to be handing out any other black pieces of paper because there's no such things as mistakes in art, just happy accidents. So anyway, now I'm using a chalk pastel. I'm starting out with a white, but you'll see that you have different colors of chalk pastels on your table. It's kind of like sidewalk chalk, but it's meant for drawing with. Yes, it is just as messy as chalk. And in fact, this could be even messier than paint sometimes. So what I'm doing with my white chalk is I'm finding the middle of my paper and drawing a horizontal line across it. This is for something called the horizon line of my picture. Now, if your paper is being held the other way, vertically, then that would mean your horizon line would go the other way. But because my paper's horizontal, I did it across my paper horizontally for that horizon. So with my white piece of paper, I am now going to rip it the same way that I drew my line. So if I drew my line horizontally across the long way paper, then I'm going to rip it the same way. When I rip my paper, I rip it at the top and pull down. The reason I rip my paper is to help me out with my guide for my lights. It's like a tracer. Now I'm not actually drawing on the black paper itself. I'm starting out with red chalk. You can use whatever colors that you want in your lights for your sky. It could be whatever. Just keep in mind that we will be using our fingers to blend these. So watch this trick and realize that I'm choosing warm colors for my first one. The reason is because I'm about to take my finger after I wipe it off a little bit so the colors don't mix and get muddy and I'm going to swipe up just like swiping up on a phone or a tablet I'm only swiping up not back and forth now you just saw me do it with a q-tip if it bothers you to use your fingers you can absolutely use a q-tip but it's a lot faster and easier to use your finger just keep in mind you'll use the wipe we're not washing hands today I'm only swiping up 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 moving that chalk onto my black paper. Then I pull it up, I pull the next part down, rip that off, that will go in the garbage, and I'm gonna have my next tracer of my random line for my lights. It's not meant to be a straight line. It's meant to be bumpy and in all random directions. It's okay if your paper rips extremely, like it could be more than mine did. That's okay because the lights in the sky should be random. They are moving across your sky horizontally though, not vertically, so make sure that no no matter what, you're just swiping up and not side to side. So now I'm using cool colors like blue, dark blue, or indigo, and purple, and I'm gonna do that same technique. But I wiped my hands off in between my colors because warm and cool colors don't mix well. If you mix colors together, 
that aren't on warm or cool or neutrals in those color families, you might get muddy brown. So make sure that you're using your wipes in between your colors before you move on to another color family. Every time I do this, I peel my paper up. I'm gonna go ahead and at the tippy top of it, pull it down to rip. Gonna have my next random tracer. And look how I left a little bit of that purple there. You could do that on purpose if you'd like to use the same colors again. Just keep in mind that when you are coloring onto that tracing paper or your white paper or your guide, you have to press pretty hard. If you color very lightly with that chalk, it's not going to push from the paper onto your starry sky. So you need to make sure that you're giving that chalk a bit of a push when you're doing that. It's okay if your chalk is a teeny tiny stub, it still works just fine. All we need is that chalk dust to swipe up the whole time. Then we do that same thing and repeat the process until you hit the horizon line. Now, I also don't wanna go past the horizon line and maybe not too close to it because my aurora borealis is going to be somewhere like the north pole or the arctic where it's very very cold maybe iceland so maybe there's snow on my mountains in the background so you'll see that i stop after this line right here then i'm going to take my white piece of chalk again and i'm going to go ahead and draw some bumpy mountains that are snow topped in the background so i'm just drawing a random bumpy line above my horizon line and then coloring it in to represent snowy mountains yours don't have to look like this in fact you don't even have to have mountains yours could be taller they could be more pointy they could be more hilly it could be more of a snowstorm it's up to you and how you do this I'm gonna go ahead and blend it very carefully. Notice I got a little bit of orange on my snowy mountains because I didn't wipe my hands. Make sure you're wiping your hands in between colors. So now I'm taking my white and I'm gonna pretend that under my horizon line, I have a reflection on the water. So I have some kind of snowy lake and in the night sky, those lights are reflecting onto this lake right here. So I take a little bit of each color that I use, like the white for the snow, each color of the sky, and I make it so it's a little bit obscured in the water. It doesn't have to be exactly how it is in the sky because it's kind of going to be a little bit, like I said, obscured from the sky because it's reflecting on the water, it's not perfect. So I'm just drawing a few lines to represent that, going to mix them together carefully just to show that it's blurred and it's a reflection. And then I'm gonna be done for today. I'm gonna make sure that I have my name on the back or that I signed it on the front with chalk. I'm gonna use a pencil or even a white chalk pastel. That way these don't get mixed up with anybody else's because right now they probably do look pretty similar. Now if you have a different idea of what you wanna do, all you have to do is use this new technique in your own composition. A composition is however you decide to make your art. So if you wanna take this idea of the Northern Lights and tie it into something else, it doesn't have to be a lake, it could all be all snow on the bottom, that's up to you. This is just one way I suggest doing this today to try it out, but you're welcome to add your own details and techniques to it. Now clean up today. Make sure you throw out all of your scrap papers that you used. If you don't finish, you can always put your paper with your name on it, that ripped paper, and put it in your table folder just like that. Now make sure that you tap your chalky paper onto your table or messy mat. That way it can go onto the table and not into your table folder. We also don't want the chalk all over the floor or blown into the air. Now this is just a time lapse of what this might look like next week when we continue working on these. All right, artists, have fun making your Aurora Borealis.